Hey everybody, it's Gomladex, and welcome back to some more Magic Arena, and today I'll be playing another premiere draft of Amonkhet Remastered, another flashback draft of the set based on Egyptian mythology and some Nicol Bolas theming. Very cool set, bunch of cool mechanics, some graveyard synergies, some cycling, some uh, some aggressive mechanics like Afflict and Exert. We'll talk about them all if we see them. Without further ado, let's get in our head in the game here and just uh, scoop up Pretty solid pack one pick one. There's actually two cards I would I would take here pretty highly. Drake Haven is absolutely absurd if you get a lot of cycling cards. And there are plenty of cycling cards in the deck. My one concern with this card is that the last deck that I drafted was cycling, so it might be a little boring to play two cycling decks in the row, but in a row, but uh, Drake Haven is absurd. Super good magic card, so I'm probably still gonna take it. That being said, we could take a trial of strength. All of the trials are quite good because you get to put them back in your hand and recast them if you play any cartouches, and all the cartouches are solid. Um, but that being said, I'm still just gonna slam a Drake Haven. It's uh, very hard to lose a game where you get a Drake Haven to start popping off and uh, creating a bunch of flyers, and you can do that for pretty cheap. It turns all of your cycling cards into one more mana to make a flyer so basically wander and death instead of two mana to discard this and draw a card it's two mana to draw a card well three mana to draw a card and make a 2-2 flyer at instant speed which is insane so drake haven's ridiculous sunset pyramid another pretty great card it fits into any deck as a pretty good card draw engine it's a little slow so if you're in an aggressive matchup you can't really spend the time tapping all your mana into this in the early game but still a good card overall that being said because we do have a drake haven we're pretty pretty heavily going to try to play blue here so we can take the really powerful blue card that i do think is stronger than sunset pyramid the trial of knowledge same benefits the green trial has which is that you can return it to your hand and recast it again later this one is just a huge draw spell drawing three cards and discarding a card not only are you drawing a lot of cards with this but that discard a card can actually be a benefit because of cards like drake haven that lets you get that benefit when you're discarding a card even if it's not by cycling so if i have five mana and i spend four for trial of knowledge and hold one up to make another drake it's going to be an incredible deal if i have both of those cards on the board at the same time so really really nice start here this pack is much less exciting i think open fire is probably the best card here just three mana instant three to any target just fine interaction but the blue stuff isn't great floodwaters would be okay because we do care quite a bit about cycling with drake haven but this isn't the craziest card ever to cast pain casters okay I think I like open fire better in red. The fact that this has to exert to deal damage to a creature is a little rough, and having one toughness is a pretty big drawback in this format since it is a format with minus one, minus one counters. And then Naga Oracles are kind of just a four mana two four that sort of like scries three when it hits the board. Not the most impactful. I'm just going to take an open fire here, but I could see an argument for floodwaters since it does cycle. But I'm just going to take that great uh, red removal there. Now we can take a Hecma Sentinels, which will definitely be good in a cycling deck. You get to turn all of your cycling cards into miniature little combat tricks, buffing up the Hecma Sentinels out of nowhere. So I do like this card a good amount. It's also just a solid sized body. Nice high toughness there. Could take Desert of the Glorified. I think this is the best like cycling deck card because blue-black is the best color pair for a cycling deck. And all of the cycling lands are really good. Um... But I'm going to go Hecma Sentinels over it and stick to blue for now. We could be blue-red. Open Fire is a pretty good red card. Now, not a lot going on here. I don't love these red cards. Don't love the one toughness, Nefcrop and Tangler. Thorn Moloch, I guess it makes sense in blue-red because you're going to have a relatively high non-creature count for that prowess ability. But just first strike while attacking. It's not the craziest thing ever. I might just take Greater Sandworm. This card's really fun for like green-blue ramp. And uh, green blue ramp is one of my favorite strategies, and this cycles as well to help work with our Drake Haven and stuff. So I'll take Greater Sandworm here. All right, Oasis Ritualist, really good sign for uh, for blue green ramp, and this is one of the coolest cards for that strategy in this format because of its ability to exert and tap two mana will add two mana of any one color. So you could even splash off color bombs. If you get like three ritualists, you could splash in like a glory bringer with no other red sources, which is really funny. So I do really like Oasis Ritualist and I think I'm gonna pick that up here over a couple good red cyclers, Desert of the Fervent and Desert Saradon. I kinda wanna try to push to blue green uh, ramp here. Maybe we just don't play the Drake Haven. Maybe we're just blue green ramp, but Looks like blue-green ramp with some cycling could make Drake Haven still a certainly uh, perfectly playable card. So I'm just going to take another Greater Sandworm here. Um, other good cards, Aven for aggro. That's about it. Not much in that pack. 
Definitely going to take that Greater Center. I'm easily going to take Desert of the Mindful. Even if I'm green, blue ramp, better bow sharpshooters is just solid. Whereas the Deserts are always, always great. There's a lot of cards that care about having a Desert on board or in your graveyard. But more importantly, it's just really nice to have lands that you can cycle if you're flooding out. So the Deserts are really high picks for me. I like them quite a bit. Now I've got Aronis' Stalwart, which I think is a much more solid 2-drop than Slitherblade is a 1-drop. Just a 1-mana one 1-2, one can't we block? It's kind of whatever. I'll take Stalwart here. I'm not going to be cycling enough to want the 3-generic mana cycler in the deck, so I'll take Stalwart. Trying to push to blue-green, it looks like. We've got an okay red card here, or an okay black cycler. Sidewinder Nog, if we get a lot of deserts, can be fine. Just have one right now. Probably just take Feral Prowler. Pretty filler, but it's fine filler. Drawing a card when you trump block with this is pretty nice. Okay, another Sidewinder or a Naga Oracle. Good with some graveyard synergies. Nice, nice body there. I don't know what I want here. So they're both pretty filler in their own way. Insider's really filler too. I'll just take an Oracle, I guess. Not super sure on that one. This is a really late Desert of the Glorified, but I'm pretty unlikely to play it, although I'm probably not playing Dissenter's Deliverance either. So I really want to be green blue. Um, Drake Haven, which is weird, but I don't know. I'll take Deliverance. We've got really good green cards. I have Oasis Ritualist and Double Sandworm. I'm pretty tied to green here, so I probably shouldn't take the Black Desert, even though that is a good sign. I could see a world like Drake Haven decks. Hecma Sentinels decks, they do want to play cards that are just one mana to cycle that you're never casting the front half of. Um, these are both whatever. I'll take the three mana 2-3 two, three over the three mana 3-2 three, flash, just the, the higher toughness card. We are not going to play life game. Okay. Yeah, I think we're going to be blue-green ramp here, but it'll be interesting to see. Maybe we get enough random, stupid, like, Dissenter's Deliverance-style cyclers to be blue-green cycling, which could be really weird. That is not a dedicated strategy. So we've opened up another great on-color rare, Champion of Wits, another card that works with Drake Haven. When it enters the battlefield, you draw two, then discard two, and then when you eternalize it later, you're going to get it as a 4-4 token, and you will draw four and discard two, so you'll be up cards when you eternalize it, which is very good. So Champion of Wits is a great Great card, happy to take it here. Other really good cards are Shimmer Scale Drake, a cycling card that can be a big flyer later. Supreme Will is a great counter spell because it has the backup plan of being a draw spell. If your opponent can just afford the three mana anyway, even initiates a pretty good deal because of that a bomb being two creatures in one. Struggles a great removal spell in red. Pretty great pack, but take the nice blue rare here. Okay, now we've got some options unquenchable thirst is pretty great if you have some deserts in your deck because if you have enough deserts this card is basically a two mana version of charmed sleep tapping down an opposing creature and keeping it tapped for only two is a super good deal countervailing winds is a pretty sweet counter spell as well though and this has cycling for for the drake haven so i think i would even take this over supreme will usually i would almost always take supreme will um, over countervailing winds but when we have a drake haven in the deck and we're in blue-green, where it's going to be pretty hard to get enough cyclers. Picking up a counterspell that can also cycle is, like, super, super nice. Yeah, I'm going to take countervailing winds here. Later in this game, this can pretty much always counter something, because your grave is just going to be pretty full, especially in a cycling strategy. Okay, really sweet green-blue ramp card spring to mind here. It's going to give us the mana ramp in the early game and the big draw spell in the late game. That being said, we also have Striped Riverwinder, which again adds to our cycling count and adds to our big late game threats. So that's filling two roles that I really, really like here. It's a one-mana cycler as well, so I'm going to take Riverwinder. It's also really hard to deal with if you ever get it out with the uh, the Hexproof there. So I'm going to take that, and maybe we can wheel Spring to Mines. Probably not, uh, but that would be really cool. What's more likely is we could wheel Compelling Argument to just have a one-blue mana cycler. Um, Deemworthy is really good. It might even be worth a red splash. Just a red and three, discard this to draw a card and deal two to a creature. Uh, I'm not going to take it over Riverwinder, though. We're just going to take that Striped Riverwinder. Okay, Dissenter's Deliverance, I guess. One one green mana to cycle it. I think we are that committed to uh, to cycling here. And the, the cat's kind of whatever. A washer Cultivator's pretty filler even for the ramp deck, so I'm just going to take the very good Desert of the Indomitable. Hooded Brawler's fine as well. Mostly filler there. We'll take the Desert. This is just a cycler. This is... No, that's, that we could cast. 
Um, Hieroglyphic Illumination or Striped River Winder number two. Both of those are excellent. I think I'm going to go with the River Winder. It's going to be a neat deck. <laughs> just like if we get a Drake Haven, we cycle a bunch of stuff early. If we don't get a Drake Haven, we just ramp into all these big cyclers. It could be pretty fun. Hecma Sentinels is pretty big too. Obviously, Illumination Illumination's great. Pretty late Sunset Pyramid. That goes into anything pretty well. I'll take another River Winder though. Um, this is all kind of nonsense. I guess Seer lets us discard a card every turn, which works with the Drake Haven. Companion gives us another two-drop creature, which we don't have a lot of. Winds of Rebuke is okay interaction. Bounce something to somebody's hand. I'll just take Companion. Pretty dang filler, but what are you going to do? The whole pack is, pretty much. Another Greater Sandworm for a nice big late-game cycler. Vile Manifestation, though, super late. If you've seen my last draft of this format, you'll know how sweet this card can be. Am I splashing it off of Ritualist? No way, am I? Am I Sultai cycling here? You know what? I'm picking up that Vile Manifestation. I cannot resist. I should resist, but I can't. Now we'll take a Shimmer Scale Drake. Very good one there. Sort all the non-creatures out. Actually not a bad curve at all, although Vile Manifestation will probably have to wait for. Not really playing that on turn two very often. It's going to be an endgame creature. Hmm. I don't know if I want Cyclers enough to play the three generic mana Cycler, so I think I'd rather just take a Brawler, just another filler creature. Okay, I'll definitely take a compelling argument though, a one mana cycler. Two mana cycler, wander and death. Listen, I I didn't want to do this. I just opened up a Drake Haven, okay? I promise it's not my fault. Cultivator actually goes up a lot in value when you need to pull out a swamp from your deck. Generally not a great card, but. We need that black mana for this manifestation. I guess anytime we draw it and we can't afford it, we can just cycle it. So there's really the most risk-free splash in the world. Yeah, and I'm pretty happy I took manifestation there. That was almost definitely the right choice. So this is my mountain of cycling cards here. And I can even play a collected company in this deck. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight hits. Nine. Nine different cards I could hit on Collected Company. Nine cards looking at the top six. Nine is about one out of every four. I should on average hit one card with Coco. If I ever hit two, it's going to be insane. I think I'm going to take Collected Company here, try to get more. Um, cheap creatures, Naga Vitalist would be absolutely perfect. A mana ramp dork. Uh, but we'll see. I'm going to take Collected Company and see how it works out for us. Vizier's really powerful, too. Actually, Vizier's super sick with Champion of Wits. You know what? I'm going to take Vizier over Coco. This card is completely absurd if you have, uh, like, any Eternalizer and Bomb, because it's always going to be at least a 2 for 1. I'm at least getting a 2 for on the board and setting up my Champion of Wits to bring back on turn 7. And at best, if it's still around by the time I Eternalize, I'm drawing an extra card off of it, which is just nuts. Just completely nuts. Another Cultivator's fine. Um, Synchronized Strike is a fine trick. I don't think I'm going to have room non-creature, though, because everything's just going to be a cycler. Cartouche is good with the Trial of Knowledge. Really would prefer a blue or green Cartouche, though. But it's an option. Yeah, Cultivator probably wheels. we we'll probably just take Cartouche, wheel the Cultivator, is the hope. Ooh, Ominous Sphinx is another great card for a cycling deck, giving a creature minus two power every time we cycle. Super good stuff there. Um, these other cards are fine. Some decent cyclers. And uh, Seeker of Insight basically does the whole cycling thing. Draw a card, discard a card. That triggers all your cycling effects. But we got to take the big old Sphinx. Nice win condition, too. Reason to believe is fun, but not great. Just a lot of mana commitment anyway, so it doesn't really feel like you're getting any sort of discount on the creature you're cheating into play. Even if you are cheating into play a sandworm that costs seven or something. I need to start cutting some cards if I'm going to make this a deck. We have 28 cards and two lands. I guess with enough cyclers we could play um, 
14 lands. That seems really low, though, because the seven mana cards we actually want to cast sometimes. So probably not. Probably have to cut a bunch of cards. We play Horror of the Broken Lands, potentially. I think the upside is higher than Hooded Brawler. Not going to play Shed Weakness, nor am I going to try to splash Red for Struggle. So yeah, Horror. Potential Cycler. If we go more into the uh, the black... An interesting one for sure. Double Cultivator could be pretty important here, so we'll have to see pick 9 if we get that Oashra Cultivator back. That would be ideal. 10, 11, 15. I have 14 Cyclers and one Cartouche of Ambition. Another Desert is sick. Another Hecma is pretty good. An Eternal is solid. I think I'm just taking another desert. I really, really, really like these. Probably too much. But again, we have kind of a full deck already, so anything that's not a land that we're taking is going to require cutting cards for, and our deck looks fine already. Uh, definitely Essence Scatter here. Solid piece of interaction. Ooh, another Trial. Let's go with our Black Cartouche here. 3 mana 4-2, worst case scenario. Yeah. Another three mana creature as well. Probably don't have enough graveyard synergies to want to run this Naga Oracle. I'm going to go ahead and cut that now. Hooded Brawler. We don't seem aggro. We're pretty just late game ramp stuff, so I'd rather have two threes than three twos. So we'll cut the three two three drop. Probably cut the two mana three one. I'm not going to play any of these cards. Take another two mana three one though. Probably cut it. We did not wheel the Cultivator, but we can play another two mana one three. That draws us a card when it dies, or another Cycler. Compelling argument here. Push comes a shove, I can put the two mana three ones back in the deck. I'm going to take another Cycler. Just have a million of those. Oh, we did wheel the Cultivator, I just mixed up what pack it's in. Okay, that's great. Get that in here. Now we get a two mana one three that lets us draw cards, discard cards, that's great. Uh, we're not going to play any of this. Could play the generic Cycler, but probably not. Can definitely play another Hecma Sentinels. All right, it's going to be an interesting one to build. Blue-green cycling. We don't do that much ramping in here. I have two cultivators and one ritualist, so we're much more blue-green cycling than blue-green ramp, but I do love that we have that backup plan in the late game of just if I top deck a sandworm, just slamming down a sandworm instead of cycling it. Most of the time we probably are cycling it, though. I think we can cut quite a few lands out of this deck, because we're going to be cycling all these 1-mana cyclers almost always. It's 2-mana cycler. 1-mana cycler. We need a black mana for that, though, so I'll keep that at a higher cost, because we're not going to get that early very often. Okay, again, I don't want to cut a million lands here. Because I do want to be able to sometimes play my big 7 mana things instead of cycling them. But, you know, double argument, double deliverance are literally always getting cycled immediately the second I draw them, pretty much. Which is kind of like cutting an on-land card. Out of the deck, because we just immediately cycle it towards the next, uh, the next draw. Yeah. I need to cut seven cards out of this thing. Might not have gotten there with Vizier of the Anointed with just the one Champion of Wits, but I'm still so tempted to play that anyway. But I probably didn't get there on that. I could cut the black splash, but I only have one card in the deck that needs black mana. Especially if I cut the horror. Then the only card that would be a dead draw is Cartouche of Ambition, and the other two cards I can just always cycle. So I could cut down to one swamp this way. If I ever get the Cartouche with the black source, it's going to be great. If I get it without the black source, I could potentially draw and then discard it to Champion of Wits, draw and discard to Seeker of Insight, or discard to Trial of Knowledge. 
So I have ways to potentially get rid of it if I can't cast it, and I have four ways to potentially get the black source for it. Two Oasha Cultivators, one Swamp, and one Oasis Ritualist. I think I do like cutting the Horror of the Broken Lands, but maybe not for the same reason. The fact that this has to have black mana to cycle it as well is actually a pretty big downside. I think the Vile Manifestation and Wander and Death splashes are pretty free. Um, that being said, Wander and Death is pretty slow. Maybe that's a potential cut as well. Is there any really bad two drops? We're probably not aggro, so we could cut Stalwart here and just play the 1-3 only. But then I'm really low on two drop creatures. I just have Seeker of Insight, Feral, Prowler, and Ronus' Stalwart. I just have three creatures I'm actually playing turn two. Does not feel great. I'll still have three creatures for turn three, even if I cut Kudu. But then our creature count's getting pretty low, but I'm kind of okay with that. Has the exact same upsides and downsides as our last deck, but whatever. We'll just play the least interactive Amonkhet remastered decks we could possibly play these uh, these two drafts. Let's see, 7, 8, 9, 10, plus 5, that's 15. Yep, that's probably where we want 15 lands here. So I need to cut one more card still. With Trial of Knowledge and Trial of Strength, I'm not going to cut this cartouche. I'm going to be greedy with it. Hmm. Maybe I do cut the Stalwart and just play like no creatures. Whatever. Whatever. We're going to go for it. All in on the cycling synergies, all in on the Drake Haven. We're going to cycle so many cards today, it's going to be super fun. Even if we scrub out and completely lose. 14 blue cards, 9 green cards. We've got a 7-7 seven, seven split right now. We want to up the blue a little bit, but not too much because the green still gives us the uh, mana fixing. So 8 blue sources, 6 green sources, 1 swamp. Looks pretty good to me. Uh, yeah, we're going to run this deck, hope for the best, see what kind of spicy cycling shenanigans we managed to get off today. All right, we are on the play here. We've got a Cultivator to play turn two, unfortunately, because we have the tapped land, but I think this is still a keep. We can cycle the Sandworm, we can cycle the Manifestation. Probably don't want to cycle Manifestation, going to try to get the Swamp off the Cultivator for it. We definitely have cards to cycle if we're not hitting lands, and we've got our land drop for next turn, so we know we can pop Cultivator in the future of this game. Um, Yeah, let's, let's pop the Cultivator turn three. That's going to get us to our Ritualist, which could cheat out the Sandworm pretty early. That could be really spicy. Gustwalker, our opponent's on a very, very aggressive deck here. Not a fan of that. They can exert the Gustwalker to give it plus one, plus one in flying. Exerting means it won't untap next turn. It's a very powerful, aggressive mechanic. It lets your cheap creatures get evasiveness for later in the game so that they can keep getting damage in. See, they're going to hit us with Gustwalker. They even have Fan Bear to tap down blockers of ours. Not going to be a big fan of this matchup, that's for sure. Yep, and there's another evasive threats. A Blighted Bats. Let's get our Black Source here and drop Ritualist next turn. Um, and drop Ritualist, play the Desert as our land for the turn. That means we can cast 7 drops next turn, just start playing Sandworms and River Winders, and hopefully that can outpace our opponent's Flyers, but I wouldn't be surprised if it can't. Especially if they blow up our Ritualist. That would be really bad for us. They've got a pretty good board state for a lethal sting. That's a black and two to destroy target creature and put a minus one, minus one counter on their own. They can just put a counter on their fan bearer. All right, no removal luckily, so Ritualist is going to pop off next turn. We're going to get a 7-7 seven, seven down. Um, or a 5-5 five, five Hexproof. Probably rather get the Hexproofer down because of their fan bearer. Just 
still going to need to find a way to deal with these flyers or we are very much going to die. But I mean, you can't deny our deck did operate at pretty much peak efficiency this game. This is just not a good matchup for us. Very aggressive deck with evasive threats that we can't block well. We're one man away from just hard casting a sandworm without a ritualist now, which is pretty cool. Four mana for the things we actually want, which is manifestation and seeker of insight, which means I can go ahead and just cycle this deliverance. Because I do have the mana to do that while still casting these. Snap, that changes things. That's going to be the flyers that we need to block our opponent's stuff. That might not actually change things this turn. Because if I play it out this turn, I'm just giving them a chance to blow it up because they don't have anything that can cycle for cheap enough to make a Drake. Because I need three mana to play this, I need two mana to cycle and one to play the Drake. So I think I play Seeker of Insight and... Maybe not vile manifestation this turn. I definitely play Seeker because then next turn I can play Drake Haven, tap Seeker to draw a card, discard a card, and spend one and get a Drake immediately, and hold up one of these to cycle. Um, I think their board is wide enough on the ground that I probably should play vile manifestation this turn. See the argument for keeping it because cycling it would make another Drake in the future. But I only have the mana to cycle one card next turn anyway. And at 10 life here, I really need to block as much as I can on the current board state. So, I mean, we've got a legitimate plan to stay in this game now. If our opponent is kind of out of gas here, they're probably not. They're definitely not. A catcher's attendant is a big one, a 3 3 flyer that can come back from the graveyard for five with its embalm ability. It's going to be pretty nasty. Okay, we're going to Drake Haven, draw a card, discard this Feral Prowler. And then, yeah, thanks to Ritualist, we can do it again with Sandworm later. Oh, try off strength. I think I would rather keep Trial of Strength than Feral Prowler. I'm not playing either this turn anyway. Which is what's going to be the better, the better play next turn. Maybe the Prowler's better just to draw a card. But Trial of Strength lets me use Seeker of Insight again, so yeah, no, we keep Trial of Strength for sure. Okay, hopefully they're out of cards. One final card in their hand. They're going to tap our flyer. You got it. Threatening lethal in the sky here. Threatening eight damage in the sky. But then I'm going to make a flyer out of nowhere and kill the bat. So if they don't have instant speed removal, I'm still in it. We'll go to two. Then they get to next turn, they have one flyer out, but they can only tap down one of my flyers. So I'll still get the chump block next turn. Not that that's going to put me in a winning position, but it'll keep me in, give me more chances. They have a trick here, we're just dead. 
We are completely tapped out, so we'll see what they're waiting on here soon enough. Absolutely nothing. Okay. Hecma Sentinels. Is there any way to get two flyers here? Yes. Champion of Witch discards two cards, which triggers Drakehaven twice. Because I will have discarded two cards. Because it doesn't say whenever you cycle or discard one or more cards. So we, we Champion of Wits for double Drake here. Far, far as I know, I think this should work. In the worst case scenario, we're finding out in the game we're pretty likely to lose anyway. <sighs> Trial of Knowledge also discards a card. We probably get rid of Sentinels and Trial of Strength then. Because Riverwinder is pretty big. Being able to uh, potentially make another flyer at instant speed here. Yeah, two triggers on the stack. All right, let's go. Drakehaven giving us a chance here. Hold that blue mana up for Riverwinder. I mean, I guess Ritualist is any color, so it doesn't matter, but still. Now we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight blockers against one, two, three, four, five. Send in the Riverwinder now. We need to start dealing some damage to them, probably. Double block? All right, Tradesies. Snap Tradesies. That is super okay with me. Whittle down this board state so they're less likely to be able to go wide around my army of drakes. And now I'm feeling pretty good if they can't find a way to just make me lose two life. Oh, that's actually pretty good. It's going to make it harder to kill their flyers on blocks, but it is sorcery speed. It's probably fine. No attacks. Um, I am going to cycle Riverwinder and get another flyer here so I can do that while I have the mana for it. Another cycler. Oh my god, things are really going here. Yeah, Trial of Knowledge with Seeker of Insight. That's going to be... Like, draw two here. Or discard two here, more specifically, more importantly. I don't even have to do that yet, because I can instant speed make two more drakes. Currently. Um... Got enough mana, though, to do the trial and make two drakes sorcery speed and still hold up. An exerting of Ritualist to get two off of Compelling Argument. Or to get one off of Compelling Argument. So I think that's probably the, the case of what I should do here. Um, Probably post-combat it. We're getting two Drakes. They have Gustwalker and Attendant. I really don't want to attack with any Flyers. But I guess I send Vile Manifestation in if they don't tap it down. The only way they kill it is by losing the Attendant. They'll have to recast it from Grave here. So we've knocked down one of their three flyers, basically. They have Gustwalker, Attendant, and an Embalm of the Intendant as flyers. Probably should send Champion to Wits in as well, because that going in our grave is probably just an upside. Just a plus side at this point. Okay, we'll just get four damage in. Sure thing. One, two, three, four. Cast the Trial of Knowledge. Draw three, then discard a card. I like Essence Scatter. I can afford it off of Oasis Ritualist, I guess. So we discard Island. I don't like discarding a card that can cycle anyway, though, but I mean, at this point, probably worth. Okay, another island, perfect. We drew perfectly, we can just discard that. Drake. And now I still have double blue up thanks to Ritualist for either Essence Scatter or Cycle Compelling Argument, make another Drake in, uh, in an absolute worst case scenario kind of event. And just surprise another flying blocker. If they like rags here, Minus two, minus two to everybody. That would be the plan, I guess. 
That would be the worst case scenario I was referring to. Uh oh. Binding Mummy's kind of scary. We've got six flyers now. I think I just counter the other zombie they try to cast if it's going to be enough tapping to be a problem. So I don't think I essence scatter that one right now. Okay, this is still going to be a hassle to try to find lethal some way. With my 13 cards left, I have to try to find a kill. I guess I'm trying to get to a point where I have so many drakes that uh, I just go wide for lethal. I mean, currently five blockers. They block five of my creatures, which means they, they take one, two, three, four. Well, at least two apiece. Five. Five, I have one, two, three, nine, ten. Doing ten damage to them right now. Um, maybe passing and just getting really wide with all these drakes soon enough. Probably cast this Hecma Sentinels though, and then just pass, hold everything up. I think I have my plan. I think my plan is to have eight more creatures than they do. Yeah, if they ever get to embalm creatures, they're going to gain some life. So we don't really want that to happen. They'll gain two life for each token that enters their battlefield since they have two anointer priests. Could mill them five, but I would still lose the mill game. Maybe I hold on to compelling argument. Do I, do I have any more in my deck? Don't remember how many I took. I have two in this deck. I can mill them 10. I still mill out first if I mill them 10. So yeah, we just cycle compelling argument for sure. Uh, yeah, we cycle that one first. Countervailing winds. I actually really like holding that up. So we go to our turn now. Got a Cultivator now. Doesn't help us go any wider, but it gives us another blocker. I have two flying attackers maximum. I feel like now I try to attack with all the drakes twice in a row to find lethal. We are really counting. On oh, some good things. Maybe I just attack with five and I should still find lethal next turn, right? And that's pretty safe to do that because then I have basically four flyers up. Right? Because cycle desert and spend one, cycle drake and spend one. I still have four two two flyers to block with. This time I'm dealing eight damage this turn and next turn I'm finding the lethal. Yeah. I think this is exactly the right number of drakes maybe one less drake still finds lethal next turn yeah one less drake i think also still finds lethal maybe that was a little bold yeah i think the right lines probably attack with four drakes to put them to 10 and then go wide in this next turn this they could have something if they can stack up like multiple removal spells they could have something to get us killed here Right, because they could tap one drake, use a removal spell on the other, turn any number of permanents you own to your hand. Wait, why? What is the backside of this card, Arena? Oh, there we go. Discard any number of cards and draw that many cards? I think that's super fine. Wrath of God, oh. No thanks. Thank you, countervailing winds. I mean, even if that resolved, I could just cycle a couple cards and have two drakes out, attack them for four while they have an empty board. I think we're still good, even if I didn't have the counter there, but that would have been pretty big. That's a pretty sick combo. That was that was spicy. It's pretty bad against a counter spell, but they were dead on the crackback either way, so. 
bounce everything to hand and go for a wrath of god all right i really did not think we were going to win that game that was a huge comeback after the aggressive start from our opponent with some good evasive threats but we found that drake haven right on time and just went for it. just absolutely flooded the board with those drakes it's going to be one and zero to start it off all right opponent is on the play here we have a couple one mana cyclers to help hit our land so definitely keep this We are on the draw as well, so we might just hit the third land. Nope. Let's go for a desert turn one. We can drop this Cultivator and cycle the argument as our turn two play. Spellweaver Eternal. Uh-oh. Some more aggressive looking stuff. Uh, if I drop Seeker of Insight and block and they just play any instant, I'm in for a bad time because of the prowess. So I think I am going Cultivator here. Cycle arguments. Opponents on mono blue so far. There's absolutely no reason to block this because of the afflict ability. Afflict means it does that damage to us if it's blocked. So afflict two means whether I block it or not, I take two. And if I block it, I'm just giving them a chance to play an instant and kill my cultivator. Even if it's just like an instant speed draw spell, it would kill it. All right, there we go. Third land off of the... Uh, compelling argument cycle, which is really nice. Now I can play a Hecma Sentinels, or I could crack the Cultivator. I think I drop a Hecma Sentinels with all of this cycling in hand to be able to uh, to kind of counterplay them, trying to proliferate their proliferate prowess. Their Spellweaver Eternal up. Could attack with Cultivator to send a message, but if they could like Mountain haste something in. It's a rare scenario where I'd need to block. Uh-oh, there's Mountain. Earthshaker Kenra? I couldn't block into an Earthshaker Kenra anyway. Aw, oh, open fire while we're tapped out so that they know that the Hecma Sentinels is not going to get saved by us cycling. I do need both of these green sources to cast Greater Sandworm, but I have quite a few more turns to draw a straight-up forest. I think the plan is to just not cycle Desert yet, but still play Island for now. And then uh, we go Seeker of Insight, hold up the mana to cycle Deliverance. Um, I guess I don't have the mana up for countervailing winds if I do that. Countervailing winds for two. Yeah, I wouldn't have the mana to use Cultivator either, so I could... Um, I can just pass here. And then if I cycle Deliverance and I hit a forest, I could cycle this desert as well. No, because this one's a colored. They're both colored cycling abilities, so I'd need double green for that. Spell Weevil Eternal is definitely putting in work. Enigma Drake. Um, yeah, our deck's not very good against flyers. That's more than scary enough. Counter unless they pay two. I can still cycle Deliverance here. I guess I should have done that first, just in case. So that it would be counter unless they pay three. Another Sandworm. Okay, well now we're pretty much definitely playing the Desert. I, mean, I guess I could cultivate for the next forest, but we're going to need to get to seven lands. Um... Five lands right now, so if I cultivate and top deck a land, I can play Sandworms next turn. Feels a little extra bold, though. Let's just get another blocker. Now, if they don't have an instant or sorcery in hand, they probably don't attack into our 1-3. Unless they are um, convinced that they can convince us they have an instant or sorcery in hand, which they can. I'm not going to block Spellweaver Eternal. So... If they know what I'm thinking, then they get a free attack with Eternal here no matter what. Because I just can't take the risk of them having an instant. I just go to an 11-2, which is fine. 11 is 
11 is kind of low, but uh, we still have some time. Try to stay in the game. Tormenting voice. Discard a card, draw two. That is a prowess in the main phase. They've got it. We'll take three. Make a sack a creature or something here? No. All right, we'll cycle a deliverance. They were just like eyeballing both of the cards a lot there. All right, we have all the lands that we need for Sandworm. So we'll be playing two greater sandworms next turn. Um, I think I actually will block Spellweaver Eternal if they attack in, because most instants that I could think of, unless they have Hieroglyphic Illumination as just a draw to, most instants I think of would just be removal spells anyway. Oh, that is disgusting. Give the Eternal Flying and plus one plus one. Yep, probably dying to that now. Guaranteed, because now I just won't be able to block it even in the future. I'll just keep doing its thing. Again, the lack of removal here are going to get us pretty hard. Our counter spells are great, but when they just resolve a two drop before we have counter spells up, we can't really deal with it. Well, actually, that's a draw and a half. If they don't have removal, we trade into the Eternal if they play an instant or sorcery. There we go. Of course. It's cut to ribbons, too, which is... Disgusting. I don't think I've won a game against Cuts or Ribbons in quite some time. It's a removal spell and a win condition all in one. Removal spell that gives you a spell to make your opponent lose a million later. Wow. We're still had all using us. I guess they didn't have double black. I was going to say we were already dead on board to Ribbons, but they didn't have double black, so they did have to play the next removal spell to kill us that turn. Otherwise, they just do five in the sky. One and one it is. Here we are now in game three. Pretty great hand. Good looking mana here. We're going to cycle a deliverance turn one. Towards some other stuff. Got a turn three Hecma Sentinels. We got some River Winders for the late game if we get there. And Ominous Sphinx, really, really nice finisher as well. Ooh, I'm drawn to a Cultivator for this turn now. Now we can even get our Black Source down. Hmm. I already have enough 7 drops if I just keep one Riverwinder and one Sandworm, so I'm probably sacrificing or cycling one of these Riverwinders during my opponent's end step here. Yeah, I'm just going to cycle this right now, hoping to make sure we can hit every land drop this game. Just convert these into lands while buffing up any vile manifestation we manage to get to. And we're going to get greedy here and just set up for five mana next turn uh, by popping Cultivator for a Swamp. Then next turn we play Island, drop a sh uh, probably Shimmer Scale Drake. So if they have removal, they kill our weaker flyer first. All right, signed Sidewinder Naga, 4-2 Trample for three. Oh my god, 4-2 Trample first strike. For 5-3 Trample First Strike, that with a Cartouche on it is incredibly deadly. That is a super bad sign. And our deck does scoop to Resolved Threats. That is a Resolved Threat. Now I probably have to just play my best threats. My only hope here is to slow that thing down by cycling some cards. 
keep hitting our land drops so we can play a 7-7 seven, seven by cycling as well. We are very far on the back foot now, so we got to go for some riskier plays to try to get back in it. Because if they have removal here, we're falling infinitely, hard, infinitely far behind either way and just losing regardless. If they can just shoot Drake, hit us for 6, we're down to 12, then we play Sphinx. They still attack in where we can't block, we're down to 7. So yeah, we have to go for the risky line that works if they don't have removal, which is working right now. Can cycle two cards for uh, for two mana here. I think I drop Hecma Sentinels, send in the Sphinx here. Um, make the Sentinels a 4-5 out of nowhere and reduce the Naga so that I beat the Naga in combat later. I think I am sending the Sphinx. They have instant speed removal for Sphinx. We're out of it. Okay, you can fog. That's a-okay. Just stop the 4 damage. And play a Cheetah. Okay, that's actually kind of bad actually kind of bad for us because they're going to hit us a bit now with that quarry hauler that does not do anything it's a four mana four three that's fine cool cool i was a little worried when they looked at sidewinder naga and then they played that i thought it was going to be another way to buff it because if they buffed it any bigger we we're going to have a huge problem now, if they don't have a combat trick, I think we're actually pretty handily winning this game. Because if they don't have a combat trick, we're about to take, like, one damage this turn and kill the Naga. Oh, or take zero if they just attack like that and kill the Naga. So let's see. Let's see if they've got a trick. If they don't have a trick, this is going to be disgusting. Heck, my Sentinel's really showing off its work here. I don't even have to cycle the next card to win this fight. So I'll keep it just in case. Yep, all right. That's huge, huge, huge stuff from the Heck, my Sentinels. Now we have six mana out of the seven we'll need for these. Since I need seven, I'm going to play this Desert out. So I know I have seven next turn. I really want to just hold up Cycling for Sentinels plus Sphinx here. So I'm just going to send in Sphinx and hold up the Cycling again. They didn't have a trick last turn they probably don't want don't have one here what they could maybe do is draw into removal and then this would be a bad play but if they don't remove something this board state keeps things really under lock all right a single cycle is going to win this fight too because hecma sentinels is absurd especially with a sphinx at its side its best buddy this is just disgusting most brutal Hecma Sentinels I think I've ever cast. And now I've just got seven mana to play a 7-7. Seven, seven. Probably better to just play the Hexproofer so we know they can't attack in. And keep shredding them with the Ominous Sphinx. Things were looking real bad earlier. They even have a Gideon and I'm not that worried. This, is a plain this was thing. a huge turnaround again. Just really good stuff going for that risky line with the Sphinx into the Sentinel Sphinx board state. Just being like impossible for our opponent to attack into with our quantity of cycling cards. So they went for those attacks. We just get some free kills on these creatures. Completely turn things around. I don't think so. Prevent all damage that the Sphinx would do. Okay, so it's going to take a while to kill them through this Gideon, but I still feel like we're definitely in the winning board state now and sandworm can only be blocked by the cheetah so they'll like all they can do is trump block sandworm five six seven eight mana i don't have the mana to play sandworm and hold up scatter though so i'll play it safe and just play the drake for now uh three four five power cycle one card and they can't kill riverwinder i guess they chump with prowler um yeah they can they can have the prowler chump here we're going to have to get rid of Gideon at some point, because they can just for free make an emblem that makes it so they can't lose the game as long as as long as long Gideon's out. All right, they went for the triple block, so sorry, Sandworm, but this is going to be disgusting. 
It's gonna be well worth not playing you. Ooh, and we draw into a one one mana green card here. Oh, I should have ordered that better. I didn't realize I didn't have enough power. It was still pretty good. That was a uh, that was bad ordering. Should have killed everything but the um, the one three actually. Just kill the cheetah and the one one. Did not count out the damage there. All right, compulsory rest the Sphinx. I've still got its activated ability, so still feel like there's not much they can do. Of course, the River Winder has hexproof, so they can't stop that from damaging them. They're going to stop the Drake I've been here. Waiting for this. Vile manifestations, pretty massive here. I think might not be big enough to. Be worth playing though. One, two, three, four. Oh, never mind. It's a five, four. It's absolutely worth playing. Um, will I take these the Sentinels trade? No, that card's just too good. I'll just send it Gideon here. If I send it Gideon and send a Sentinels at their face, they might just go for the block. They've gone for every other block, even with a double trick here, so I don't think they're gonna play around a cycling card that I'm not gonna cycle. All right, very sick vile manifestation on board now. Make getting a 4-4. Four, four. Block with Cultivator and grab a land. Plus X, plus X, Trample. All right, Trample and Gideon. Doing everything they can there. They will, uh, they'll hit us for five then. I suppose. What's this thing do? This isn't an instant, right? Yeah, this is also a sorcery, so that's whatever. Yeah, we'll just take five. I could block and sack, but I still take five because of the trample they added. So we'll just take it. And then we crack in for lethal this turn. You know what? It's actually super okay that I ended up cycling the um, sandworm because I somehow did not have two green mana yet and I didn't even notice. I couldn't have played the sandworm anyway. Oh, and all that was really sweet stuff yet again from the green blue cycling deck. Two and one. Here we are in game four. We got all, all of our um, early game plays set up, so pretty nice hand. Cultivator, Prowler, and Seeker of Insight in the early turns. Oof, Trial of Knowledge coming up. That's going to be a good one. Probably even going to play Desert of Mindful, so I know I have four mana turn four, but I would even if I sack the Cultivator. And pull out the Swamp that way as well, then I'd have double blue and double green. Oh, and then I could even keep the Desert to sack, because now I've got... Yeah, I've got plenty lands. I think I might even just play a Prowler this turn rather than sacking cultivator for the black source right now i'm gonna cycle argument but i might as well actually keep it at this point till i have something that benefits from cycling because i think my hand i've already got a great turn four play so i don't need to draw anything specific right now okay cool another cycler and we'll go trial of knowledge draw three discard one uh, I do not love my options of discard. I like all these cards. Actually, I've been liking the Hexproof more than the just big 7-7, seven, seven, but they're green-red. They cannot kill a 7-7. Seven, seven. So maybe it's the Hexproofer here. Keep the 5 drops, because we could cast them if we hit an untapped land. And even if we don't, we can cast them pretty soon. It's actually probably a compelling argument. What am I on about? Everything in the hand, almost everything in the hand cycles anyway. Um... Could draw another card off Seeker of Insight, just draw a discard real quick. Yeah, I dig closer to Drakehaven here. We just mill one. Okay, goodbye, Heckmas Emeralds. You are good, but I'm trying to play a good five drop this next turn. We're just trying to play a bunch of big, overwhelming cards this game, it looks like. Heckmas Sentinels is cool and all, and I do have a lot of cyclers in hand, but ideally I'm not really cycling any of these cards. I'm just going to start slamming them down every turn. I'm 
Defiant Great Maw. 4 or 5 comes with 2 minus 1 minus 1 counters. And uh, every time it attacks, they remove a counter? No, when they put counters on it, they remove counters from other creatures they control, such as the 3 mana 2 3. It doesn't remove counters from itself. Cool. We did hit the untapped land, which is beautiful. Um, I've played against a lot of cuts, just 2 mana 4 damage. So, I think. And because I don't want to cycle anything anytime soon anyway, I think I'm just going to play the 3-4 flyer first, the one that I'm more okay with dying to some kind of removal. So if they do have some kind of removal, maybe it's not going to hit the Ominous Sphinx. Maybe it'll hit the Drake first. Bitterbow Sharpshooters. Uh, well, I can't get in against that. I could have with the Ominous Sphinx. That would have been threatening enough. 100% playing this land. Could Trial of Strength... If I had the mana to play Trial of Strength and hold up Cold Fader, I'd go for that here, but since I don't, I'll just tap out for Sphinx. Pass. Probably chump blocking with Prowler if they send the 4-4 in just to draw a card. Get to that 7th mana. Although, if I don't draw the 7th mana, the next turn is when I get to go Trial of Strength and sacrifice the Cultivator, get our Swamp out of our deck, and have enough mana to play everything in the deck. Oncrop Champion. That's kind of threatening, right? When it exerts, untap all other creatures they control? I guess it's not that bad can be really threatening if they have a lot of creatures that can exert out because it gets it gets past that kind of exert downside all right i have enough tricks to beat the sharpshooters i just sent in sphinx now they're not enough tricks but enough cyclers to use as tricks i should have sent both and there's no reason not to then they just block drake and i still cycle and get four damage in i guess i get just as much damage in but this way, but now I don't have to cycle Deliverance yet, so it actually did play out better. This this attack with just Sphinx plays better if they if their plan is to just block the Drake, which I think they would have blocked the Drake, but I guess I'll never know. It's probably worth that risk just to uh, give them the opportunity of misplaying and not blocking Drake, and we just get seven in. Because they could very well... It's not even necessarily a misplay. They could just be playing around a green combat trick. There's lots of green combat tricks in, like, every set. Well, this is... This is a, uh, a scam. But we'll figure out what kind of scam soon enough. I can't... I can't see this being devastating. Even if they do, like, plus two, plus one of their whole board, this is, like, fine. Right? I guess plus one toughness would be pretty bad. If I'm not killing the one thing I'm trying to kill here. Maybe I throw the Drake in with the sharpshooters on the sharpshooters. Yeah, I mean, I have the late game unlocked. Let's just make sure this turn doesn't do anything. Uh, yeah. I can still cycle if things go really awry. I can cycle twice. If this is zero tricks, though, then I'm just losing my Drake for no reason. They're going to impeccable timing the 4 2, so they just win that fight there. Okay, I can't stop that from happening. They also get the prowess. That's really bad. The fact that they get the prowess here to kill the cultivator. Now I have to cycle two things so I can save cultivator and the drake or i can just let drake die no i'm gonna cycle i guess we could lose cultivator if i just draw a land then cultivator can die that's fine so we'll see what we draw first before i decide if i cycle another card Draw another Cultivator. Actually, this is probably fine. I'll just wait. 
Because even if I save Cultivator, it doesn't mean I'm playing one of these seven drops next turn, because I've already spent the mana to not be able to sack it this turn in order to save my Shimmer Skill Drake. Sure. Now, well, now I'm cycling another card. I think, again, I would rather have the Hexproofer. Now that I know that they're a white deck, they could have pacifism effects to put on a 7-7. Alright, that was not ideal, but it wasn't horrible. Not as bad as it could have been since we had all those cycling tricks, and we hit the seventh land. Okay, well now it was just fine. A-okay, -okay, it was perfect. Actual perfection. I'm gonna attack with just Sphinx, because I don't want them to block Drake and have to cycle a card instead of playing Riverwinder. That would be pretty bad. But if they block Sphinx, I'll kill sharpshooters all day long. Alright, no no river winder this turn then, that's fine. I'll just kill sharpshooters. They have another trick after all that. After the double impeccable timing. That would definitely be bad. That would definitely be super bad. This looks like a no. This looks like this just happens. Maybe they have magma spray to shoot Sphinx with. That would kind of suck, but it might be worth keeping the river winders in hand. Four, five, six. I don't know. If I, if I knew with a certainty they had Magma Spray in hand, it would probably be worth cycling one of these. But if it's just a chance, Riverwinder's not that much worse than an Ominous Sphinx on board. The problem is that it just takes a little while to get it on board. Whereas Sphinx is already out. So we'd be losing a Riverwinder to keep a Sphinx. Luckily, they did not have a Magma Spray for the final two damage. Okay, Evolving Wilds is going to pull out a basic land of any type onto the battlefield tapped. See what they're getting here. They're already red, green, and white as far as we know. Looks like just red, green, white get the second red source for their glory bringer that we can essence scatter. It's not necessarily a glory bringer here. And it's the only color they didn't have two sources of, so. However,. That being said, I'm moderately scared of Glorybringer now that I brought it up to where <laughs> as much as I should probably just play Riverwinders, I might just keep attacking with them with Flyers and holding up Essence Scatter instead, because we still have the game unlocked just attacking with Flyers, I think. Like, we outrace them. On board. We're just taking four a turn, they're taking seven a turn. And then we're just holding the river winders as minus two, minus zero tricks still. So it's not like they're useless if I'm not casting them. If I'm just trying to hold up my mana for essence scatters. So I think I'm just going to play it really, really safe here because I did really scare myself there. Ooh, that's going to be so disgusting with two trials out after I sack this cultivator. And now I'm infinitely more happy about just saving mana up for essence scatter because I also want to save my mana up to sacrifice my cultivator anyway. So already not wanting to tap out anyway. I'm going to need to get a drink after this game. The voice is getting pretty gravelly here. Things are looking very good for us. Don't got much else to say here as we wait for our opponent. Just keep doing our thing. Make sure their attacks go wrong by cycling stuff and counter... If they play a bomb creature, next turn we crack for a swamp, so we've got Cartouche to pick up Trial of Knowledge and Trial of Strength to be able to recast them. That should be 
absolutely backbreaking. If we weren't already in the lead, that would flip things around. Another land. Puncturing blow. You got it. I do not have a counter spell. I could reduce some of their damage while I still have that ability to do so. I'm at 20 life though. I don't think that's going to be necessary. I may as well just hold on to the river winders. And we will block the Defiant Great Maw with a 1-3 and Chump block the Oncrop Champion. Take 3 damage here. That's not bad. Not even a Chump block since I'm going to sacrifice this this turn anyway. But I do. I stop all the damage. Pull out our Swamp. And then Cartouche of Ambition is going to handedly win the race by giving lifelink to the Drake as well as putting a minus one minus one counter on one of my opponent's creatures and returning both of my trials back to hand to do some really disgusting things. Here's the swamp. Okay. Take three, down to 17. They have anything to play post combat? They do not. Ooh, now we have a countervailing winds to hold up for three mana. That'll counter anything at this point with eight cards in our grave counter unless they pay eight. So Cartouche of Ambition on our Shimmer Scale Drake. And then just hold up countervailing winds, I guess. Keep these trials in hand for now. Can't really lose the game if they can't cast any more spells from this point with these two counter spells up. So we'll just keep playing whatever we can afford while still holding up a counter spell. Because uh, we outrace them handedly right now. I'm going to put a minus or minus one on the Great Maw. Because if I put it on any of the others and they manage to put more counters on it, um, they'll remove counters from the other creatures. So just assuming they have things in their deck that will synergize with the Great Maw. All right, and I can tr trump uh, the Moloch, I guess. All right, get in for four and gain four. And so we're gaining four life a turn and only taking five. So we're basically taking one a turn. I mean, they're dead next turn in this guy. Unless they can remove this, which is going to be hard to do through two different counter spells. Okay, and I can scatter that, so I will. Countervailing Winds is more flexible, so we'll save Winds for something else. And they're just going to scoop them up, and it is going to be 3 and 1 for the Simic Cycling deck. Simic, big stuff, too. Here we are now in game 5. This is a little bit of a risky hand without a green source. Um, I still really want to keep it. I really like the turn two and turn three plays here. We can cycle a river winder as well. I'm going to keep this. I'm probably going to hold the river winder to cycle after we get a sentinels down so we can use it as a trick as well. Although there's an argument for just cycling it immediately to help get the green source for ritualists. Just dig a little closer to it. Don't think I'm doing that though. Just have been very impressed by the Hecma sentinels um, this time around in this deck. Right, Initiate's Companion. I don't love the trade for Seeker, but it might be worth it. Because I have no non-creature cards that I'm playing anytime soon anyway. Although I guess I'll have plenty of creatures that are more than big enough to block it in the future. Because Sentinel's blocks is a 3-4 potentially, Ritual's blocks is a 2-4. Yeah, I'm not really using Seeker much in the future. Hooded Brawler... Um, dropping a 2-4 does kind of force them to, uh, to buff that thing to attack in. Actually, offer the trade, too. I've got another Sentinels coming up. Actually, be pretty not pretty fine with this trade. We're going to drop a 5-5 five, five Hexproof. Probably have the biggest creature on board. 
I'm gonna even do that next turn if I exert the Ritualist, which is almost definitely worth it. All right, they're gonna exert their Hooded Brawler to hit us for five. Oh, shoot. That's gonna be almost impossible to beat. They get to cast creatures from the top of their library, so probably gonna draw a lot of extra cards off of this thing. Well, we're gonna do our best here. Um, can't cycle enough to kill that with Sentinels if they block, so we just exert the Riverwinder. Pretty sure Vizier the Menagerie is going to take this game if we can't deal with it very soon. Yep, they've already drawn one card off of it. It's already a two for one, and it's a four mana three four, so it's not even a bad body straight up. But as you see, they played Bitterbow off the top, so they've drawn one. Trial of Knowledge here and just dig for something. This is some big stuff. I need another green source for this sandworm. I actually definitely don't need the cultivator now that I've got a black source too. Although cultivator can pull out the green source, it'll just take quite some time because I'm not even playing it this turn. I guess I have ritualist to, to play sandworm too. Yeah, we'll discard. Eh, maybe a land. I am playing land this turn. Three, four, five, six mana, even without ritualist. Um, I don't know. I still feel like it's probably cultivator as the discard. At least my opponent doesn't really attack in yet, but again, the longer this Vizier just gets to go off and draw the more cards, the less likely I am to be able to to win this game. We have six mana on board now, so I would be a little surprised if they shoot Ritualist with some removal. But they are eyeballing it. Alright, sick. We do have a double green card in our hand, but I can't know that for sure. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. Yeah, this card's brutal. Sorcery speed keeps it from being completely unbearable, but... Next turn, they're going to tap two of our creatures and give their whole board vigilance. We're actually going to die a lot quicker than I thought we would. I thought we were going to just die to a really grindy game to Vizier, but... That's, um... That appeal to authority will certainly change that and just kind of kill us right now. I guess I can give up on Sandworm to kill sharpshooters here. I just lose the Riverwinder to do so. Unless they have a one white mana trick in hand. Center's Deliverance. Alright, well I've still got a Hecma Sentinels. They're just going to tap it down though with authority. Well, we're just going to die to some nasty stuff here. Tapping down two of our creatures. Play another Sentinels, and they're going to tap both of them here. They're not actually adding any power this turn, luckily. So, I mean, maybe if they for some reason choose to tap Ritualist, we can surprise kill something with Sentinels. But I feel like they're tapping both Sentinels, and then we're not doing much. But that's why I'm not playing the Shimmer Scale Drake, because maybe they don't tap both Oh, They didn't tap both Sentinels. Oh, and they sent in with the Vizier? Confirm, confirm the attack, please. Oh my god, okay, so we get to kill the Vizier. We may have a shot here. It's not a big one, but it's a shot. Because we're killing their card draw engine. Okay, we're drawing another cultivator is not very good right now, but we are killing their card draw engine. Desert's fine because it can cycle. Okay. It's not looking great, but it is not looking nearly as terrible as it was a turn ago. Gonna exert some brawlers here. They sure are, because they get to untap their whole board so they can attack with five fives again next turn. Let's 
five, four. I feel like the most important card to kill is probably the champion. But I have to block both brawlers to not die. I have to block two of their three creatures. So we're going to chump block one with Cultivator and double block another with Sentinel's Ritualist. Maybe we block the brawlers? I don't like this. I should have cycled pre-combat so I knew exactly if I top deck another cycling card, I could actually make blocks really good for me. Yeah, that was a misplay. I should have cycled pre-combat so we can see what we're drawing into. And then I could maybe have a Sentinels on the champion here. But now I don't have to cycle at all, I guess, instead. So that maybe I can hit another cycling card this turn and I just know we're double cycling. Okay, and they're going to kill Ritual, so we have two Sentinels still. Okay. So to one. Two Sentinels on board with one definite cycler. I've got double cycle going on. To kill an on-crop champion without losing a creature. I don't think they attack with Hooded Brawler at all this turn. I mean, they could attack and exert it, and then I'd have to double cycle. But because they have the on-crop champion exert next turn, where they'll immediately untap the Brawler anyway, that's a horrifically good draw. Oh, snap. We could cycle these and try to hit our one counter spell for that. But then they know that we're cycling. Yeah, that's bad. No exert, please. You're rude. Alright. I'm gonna draw countervailing wins, I swear. A trial of Strength is not a bad draw. That trades in the champion. That's a huge draw. That's a huge draw. Okay, Essence Scatter would not have countered Research, so it's fine. Or compulsory rest, not compulsory research. That's a completely different card. Um, I might as well sack this, right? I don't have any enchantment removal. I do not have any enchantment removal, so I might as well gain the life. The extra safe. Vile manifestations, another great draw. That thing's gonna be ridiculously big on this board state, and I'll still have the mana for essence scatter. Okay, actually a huge chance. Good old 6-4 says hello. Um, I don't think I counter that. Oh, oh, I wish I had one more mana. Oh, I wish I had one more mana. Attack with Vile Manifestation, trade for champion. Then play a 5-5 five five against just their 2-1. I mean, I'm at three here. They might just not block. They're going to just not block. Okay. If they top deck removal, they kill the 4-2. I block there. I just take two, and I'm still alive. So one turn, no good creature drawn, please. So I can just essence scatter later. All right, sick. That's a perfect draw for us. Now I even have a Feral Prowler to block with. And an Essence Scatter up. Let's go. If they draw something that taps two creatures again, I, I guess I'm dead. Another appeal to authority. I guess I would die to that anyway, though, because the Trample, too. All right, they're at one life. That was, that was a little risky. If I had a Cycler in hand, that would have been lethal that turn. But just all lands for my opponent in the end. By the skin of our teeth, we find another victory there. That, that game... 
getting a, a pretty big benefit to the fact that we're only running 15 lands and two of those cycle. That was uh, that was one of the huge upsides to us there. Um, was um, just having our opponent draw a lot more lands than us in the late game, just thanks to the low land count plus ability to cycle lands there. Definitely partially luck that they, they flooded out that hard in the end, but partially just because of how the, del the deck is built with that lower land count, so super nice stuff there. We are 4-1 and one now, getting at least another 4-3 and three run from the Almonket Remastered drafts. Huge comeback yet again. We're on the play this game. We can cycle a Riverwinder turn one and a Manifestation turn two to try to hit lands so that we can get to our turn three Champion Wits and Hecma Sentinels, which are both great. Especially if we Hecma Sentinels into Champion Wits, we get a big four power attack off the Sentinels. So yeah, let's go for it. Let's cycle aggressively this game because we do need to hit lands. Trying to get all the way to five mana for this Ominous Sphinx. So we're just going to turn one cycle to Riverwinder. See what they've got over here. Nothing yet. Cycle Riverwinder. Cultivator. Uh, double Cultivator. I really want to draw my third land next turn. I want that more than just playing a card that once I hit three mana gets me to four mana. So I kind of feel like a cycle manifestation. It's pretty tempting to just Cultivator instead. But then again, I'm just less likely to hit my next land. Cultivator is... Much better when I know I have a third land, so I'm not going to do anything with them right now. Oketra's Avenger, that's scary. 3-1, they can exert it to prevent the combat damage that would be dealt to it. We've got a tapped land. Tapped land isn't great, but Feral Prowler is. And I've got plenty of 3-drops to play, so I don't want to drop Cultivators right now. I'm going to play Feral Prowler, make them exert so that they attack us slowly. Or if they don't, we'll just take the trade because it's good for us. We'll draw a card out of the deal. Okay, they are going to exert, which means they're only attacking us every other turn with Avenger, instead of every turn. Dauntless Even. That one that one untaps their other creatures. Okay, yes, yeah, so that gets them out of the exert. Still can't attack with it next turn, though. So dash doesn't actually do anything this turn um, on its first attack. Um, now I can drop Cultivator and Champion of Wits. Um... It's the most likely way to get the uh, five mana for Sentinel. Kind of want to just play Champion Wits first, though. So I guess I play that and hold up the green. But I might see a world where I just discard two Cultivators because they are really slow. Yeah, if I hit the fifth land, I'm just sorry, Cultivators. I need this fifth land, and this Drake Haven's really good. So uh, get out of here. I guess I could discard Sentinels, but no, get out of here. I do not want you Cultivators. Uh, I can get one damage in with Prowler. They're not going to haste something out here in blue-white. <laughs> Drawing Drakehaven right after the Champion of Wits is a little sad, because we have seen that it does do the double combo with the Drakehaven. It does give us the two Drakes when we play those two cards together, which is super sick, but... It is what it is. Do I want to get a flying blocker here that I'm very okay with blocking with, or do I want to just play the really big one? I think I want to just play the really big one and hope for the best. Hope for no removal here. Could see the argument for going for Drake Haven though, because that one's less likely to be easily interactable with. Because every deck is running removal for creatures, not every deck is running removal for enchantments. But we can still Drake Haven next turn for a good time. What could they have here? Blue white? Blue white. To kill Sphinx. I don't know. I don't remember the set well enough. I know there's like plus two, plus one till end of turn. I can't think of a trick that would kill my Sphinx and not also their Aven, so I'm pretty sure I get a two for one out of this. Um, although I'm only taking five, going to ten is kind of low, but against blue white. With a Drakehaven and Ominous Sphinx on board, I don't see how we possibly lose. If I can guarantee these are out, even if I'm down to 10 life, so... 
I think I would rather just take it all. So that I know I get to keep Ominous Sphinx, and then they're just not going to have any good attacks for the rest of this game. And double blue and white. They could have, like, Sensor, but they can't have anything that will counter Drakehaven here. So I can afford to pay for Sensor. I can afford to pay for, um... The counter, unless I pay three, whatever that one's called. Well, that was the plan. I did not remember that card's existence whatsoever. Well, that was going to happen at some point, no matter what. That is really rough, though. It's now not having this ability is pretty brutal. And they get to draw two, discard two off of it. God damn, that is super bad for us. A three mana divine verdict. I completely didn't know that card existed. Probably saw one in a draft, but we just weren't in the colors. Yeah, that's not good at all. Guess I should have just never attacked with the 4 4 is the correct play if I'm playing around that card. We're definitely killing the Aven here. At this point, I probably am chump blocking Avenger. Although seven is also not a horrible life to life total against white blue. They're just not gonna have any life loss spells or burn spells or anything like that to worry about. And shouldn't be too many combat tricks to worry about. Take another three. Wow. And for a really bad time if they should have double farm to market here. That is so efficient. Three mana. It's two spells slapped on the one as well. Well, I can uh, Trial of Strength and still hold up Countervailing Winds, which is probably going to get cycled. I guess if it's probably getting cycled, we play Hecma Sentinels instead of Trial of Strength right now. So we have a 3-4 blocker, so I can block Avenger without losing a creature, even if they exert it again. Good lord, have things gone awry, though. That seems really good. That seems good enough to counter, unfortunately. So we can never block it with a Drake Haven. I guess if I get two Drakes out, I can block it, but seven life. Yep, I guess we're taking two in the sky this turn, and I have to chump block the Avenger. Well, we're dead. Not this turn, but definitely this game. Opponent has a bunch of really, really good, really efficient interaction. They have an incredible deck over here. I'm getting two drakes now, I guess. Don't know the mana to do that after a trial of strength. Teensy tiny shot. Not really though. Okay, the flyer's gone. That's something. Fan bearer is not good, and another flyer. Okay, so they tap down the flyer and we die. I can't afford this cartouche of ambition, so yeah, we're just straight up dead. No, that's three damage in the sky. I can't play enough blockers to live, though. They just attack with everybody, I'm dead. 
They tap down the flyer, so I know I take three in the sky. Then I have three blockers on the ground for their three attackers on the I guess I block all three. No, we have one turn, so I play Ritualist here, so I can hold up Essence Scatter and try to Cartouche of Ambition next turn. Okay, I'm pretty sure I live. I go to one life. And if they have three mana or less removal again, we're just dead. Because then they play three mana or less removal and tap a thing. Or if they just buff the board, my counter spells only for creatures. Okay, tap the flyer. Going to attack with their flyer. And that's it, put us to one. All right, they're gonna draw two, discard two. Gain three life with Cartouche of Ambition. Go back up to four. Don't think it's enough though, because I have to tap a creature to do it. Eight mana is exactly enough to cast everything. A three four Hecma Sentinels. They'll probably just double block. I don't think I can convince them to not. I don't think I can convince them to not kill his Hecma Sentinels. I guess I could kill their 3 1, and then they can't kill the Hecma Sentinels, but then I'm not mitigating the flying damage. That's gonna stay a 3 2. I don't know, maybe that's the best I've got here, is to just kill O Catcher's Avenger so I know they can't kill Sentinels, and they might have to start tapping Sentinels with Fanbearer. Alright. Yeah, that's probably the best we've got here. I have to attack with it here because I have to know that I'm gaining three and I can't know that I'm gaining three on blocks because they can tap my life linker. And I should again have exactly enough blockers on ground. Two blockers for their two ground attackers, because they have to tap Fanbearer to tap my flyer. Another market, draw two, discard two. Discard a couple lands, play land for turn. They've got one card in hand. If they ever cast Memory from Grave, I think that's just going to be better for us than them, because they're going to have to tap all their mana into it, and then we can just start playing all those seven cards we get. Unfortunately, Embalm is an ability, so I won't be able to Essence scatter their Embalm off the Eve and initiate here. Got another flyer, Shimmer Scale Drake here. That's that's a draw. Uh, so I'm gonna move to combat. They're gonna tap down my life linker, then I'm gonna cast a Drake, so we've got two blockers for their flyer. Does the math make it to where I can attack with Champion of Wits here? Because if it does, then I should. They untap with four attacking creatures. We're going to have four creatures up. They're going to tap the Drake. If they attack all, we go block, block, block. Yeah, the math means I can attack with Champion of Wits here to get that in my grave. And they're not going to let it go into my grave, so we'll just cast Shimmer Skill Drake. Just get the two damage off of it. Oh, I get, with Drake Haven, though, I could draw a card and make a 2-2. Two -two. It's probably better to just get a 3-4 than draw a card and make a 2-2. Uh, two -two. But I'm not actually sure. I don't... I think I have to save Essence Scatter for if they get another flyer. I think I have to let the camo fly. Not literally, but like, let it through. That was a poor choice of words. Greater Sandworm is almost definitely better as a flyer off of Drakehaven. So 
we're going to be cycling that. Probably trying to do it at instant speed over anything else. Attack with Drake here. Attack with Champion, almost certainly. Although the board's getting a little wider here, maybe not. And I will send in the Drake for three. I don't like this. This is so stressful. This has been such a stressful draft. I thought we were out of this game like 10 turns ago, and that's been a lot of these games in this draft. They are gonna tap the flyer, you got it. Jeru's resolve, untap a creature. They're gonna tap another blocker of ours. That's why we're down to two blockers on board. On board, I think we're dead here, but we've got a cycle, which they don't know about, which is going to make this pretty bad for them. Yeah, we take one damage to all that stuff. Oh yeah, that was a really good turn for us. Drake Haven being instant speed is huge. They've got one blocker. They can't tap down the lifelinker. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. They have to block with the 1-1. One, one. We just attack everybody. They've got one blocker and we champion of wits and get another flyer because we've got the mana for it. We just send the squad in now. I think that just completely twisted it in our favor. Like completely here. I should have pre-combated the champion to gain more life off the Hecma Sentinels, but seven. We're getting one Drake and a 4-4 on the ground. Yeah, they're down to two. Oh, if I championed with pre-combat, that would have been putting them to one, because they'd have to block that instead. Maybe it would have even been lethal, I'm not sure. Alright, we're at 6 life and they have to kill us this turn or they're super dead. Just memory, which is not going to change anything. And we're going to, once again, somehow, I mean Drake Haven is Al, but <laughs> just very, very slowly just grind it out and completely turn things around. For five wins now, we are in the money. I believe we're five and two. Um, but I could be wrong, so we'll double check here before we head into the next round. Five and one. Really, really nice run from the uh, the Simic cycling deck. Opponent is on the play here. Sand's not great. The cultivators have been pretty big underperformers for us, but they've still been important at getting that black mana for manifestation and the cartouche, so really don't like having double cultivator ever. Because um, the second's pretty redundant, it's really just for the one swamp, but I'm still going to keep this hand. We hit one land, we're at Trial of Strength, and obviously the Cultivators, if we don't hit a land, we can start cycling these cards to make sure that we uh, get closer to doing so. Okay, um, Probably discard the um, seven mana card turn one here. Yeah, I'm just going to cycle this immediately. Ronus' stalwart. 
Well, we play a 0-3 and now they'll have to uh, exert that to hit us, otherwise we'll just block. Bounce off of it. They're going to cycle an Unburden to draw a card, because they need a black source, it looks like. And they're going to exert the Stalwart to hit us for three. And they're still stuck on two mana turn two. We might be in the same boat here, though. Cycle the one mana card over one of the two manas, just in case. I hit another one mana cycler instead of a land. That is another two mana cycler. Well, at least my opponent and I are under the same predicament. Just going to awkwardly stare at each other for a bit. Nope. They missed one land drop, they are at the desert now. We missed one land drop, we're at the island now. I think we actually missed two? Probably bad at math, I'm not sure. Uh, we just trial here, get a 4-2 down. Still trade into the Stalwart, that seems fine. Um, or I could crack for my Swamp here. Get Manifestation down, doesn't seem insane. I'm just going to get a trial. I'm just going to get a trial. Okay, they're going to cycle beneath the sands to draw a card. And probably hold up countervailing winds or cycling cultivator next turn, and then we actually have a creature to trade into the stalwart and take no damage this attack. Hapatra. That can be really devastating if they have any minus one, minus one counters. They're going to make a 1-1 one, one death touch. Every time they put a minus one, minus one counter on something, that can be a really, really big deal. So I do not like that at all. Um, now we really need the Black Source. We've got our Cartouche with our Trial now. So uh, you're in a pass turn here, hoping that we don't have to do anything so I can just cultivate. But if I have to do something, I will. Counter Veiling wins. Uh, yeah, I've got to counter that, but I can't because I've only got one card in Grave. Um, I think I, I think I'm in a really bad spot here. Obviously, I, I can't counter it. They can spend the two. So they're going to get a 1-1 one, one Death Toucher, give a creature a minus one, minus one counter, and have a 4-4 four, four Life Linker every time they exert. Might just be game, but we have come back from in some insane things today. But as we've seen in our in our loss, our, our biggest problem is resolve threats, and there's a Hapatra that resolved, so it's not looking particularly great here. Let's cultivate. Grab our swamp. If my opponent will allow me. Alright, there we go. Took a minute. No land draw again. Um, can Cartouche. I can kill their Death Toucher and have a 4-2 lifelink. And a Cartouche of Strength in hand, or I can just play an 0-3 and a 1-4? 2-4. 2-4 is pretty great, but if they have more minus one, minus one, Patra is going to beat us up and take our lunch money. Play Sentinels and Cultivator and just really hope we get a turn off here so that I can set up some pretty sick Sentinels blocks again because our hand is five cycling cards. So let's see. Hopefully they miss on any more minus one minus one counters. Well, Quarry Hall is very good here. Another Death Toucher and they will kill our 3-1 permanently. 
Now Stalwart gets to attack in freely. As does the snake. I'm surprised they exerted there. They did, definitely didn't need to. It's actually going to be more damage and life gain over the long run if they just hit me for three twice in a row than hit me for four once over the next two turns. That is A-OK -okay with me. Drop Cartouche on Hecma Sentinels here and then uh, kill the Death Toucher and then I'm still holding up a cycle. And this game's looking real bad no matter what we do, so I'm going to go for the spicy line that could just blow up in our face. But if it doesn't, it is uh, it is kind of extra spicy. It's whenever you put, yeah, so when I put a counter, it doesn't count. They don't get a, a replacement snake here. If they have an instant speed way to get a counter, this is going to be really bad. Let's find out. And maybe I'm just gaining three here. Maybe I should have just held it on blocks. So probably not blocking much. Block with both so they kill it no matter what. Yep, opponent is smart, so we're definitely losing this game. Yeah, I should have held it on blocks. Kind of just relying on my opponent making a really bad block to get anything done here. That was not the best line. We did draw land at least. And if I held on blocks, I wouldn't have played a land this turn. Because I would not have cycled yet. And I'm still up to 16, so again, it's not like completely over yet. It's just not good with Hapatra doing her thing. I could play Manifestation and Trial of Strength to get two solid blockers down. Or I could just play the one Shimmer Scale Drake, get the one big flyer down. Everybody's coming in, alright. And a minus one, minus one counter my cultivator, that's fine. Alright, pretty much nothing. Just play a 4-3. Time for some big blockers. Opponent seems to be playing while they're pretty busy with something else. Because they're not even stopping at times where they could have any interaction. It's just some strange pauses at times. Multitasking. That's horrible. Cartouche of Strength, very, very good removal spell. Going to kill our Vile Manifestation and buff their Quarry Hauler. I guess I get to trade my 4-2 in it. I guess I could trade it for that at any time anyway, so that's why. <sighs> 5 4 trampler. And the 4 4 that's only attacking us every other turn anyway. Sure. Trade with the 5 4 trampler, and we're down to 7. Good god, their deck is very synergistic. They've got the Obelisk Spider and the Hippotros. They just do completely disgusting things with those two cards together. Do not have the mana for Sandworm. I could Countervailing Winds, but I can't do that and play Drake this turn. And if I don't play Drake, I'm just dying on board, right? Well, I guess I block there. I take one, two, three. Stalwart's not attacking this turn. I 
Hopefully they're out of stuff. They've played like things every single turn now, so. We're hoping they miss a turn here and we don't have to counter this turn. We can wait for it for next turn. That is far from a miss. I am so tempted to scoop right now. Basically kill our flyer, drain us for life, and make a 1-1 death toucher. That's disgusting. Go to three. Well, we've seen what Drakehaven can do. Can it do it again today? No, they have too many attackers. I can only have one possible blocker up after a Drake Haven. Well, I'll have three blockers up total, but that's still, against six creatures, that's exactly lethal. Yeah, I can't win, but whatever. I'll play it out. Maybe they don't attack with everybody. They actually don't even have to, they just attack with Stalwart and I'm dead if they exert it. That was a very long game. These games are always pretty um, exhausting. When it's like your opponent plays turn two Hippotra and you're like, yeah, I'm probably dead, but I need to play it out, so I have to sit here for 25 minutes till I actually lose. Here we are in what could be the final round. We are five wins and two losses in round eight here. So if we lose this one, it's going to take us out of contention. If we win, then we'll be competing for a seven win run after this, because this would be our sixth win if we can get it. Um, I think I'm going to keep this hand. It is pretty bold of a keep, but we're on the draw. We have Prowler drawing a card when it dies. We have countervailing wins to cycle. And if we hit one land, we have Champion of Wits to dig for the rest. Very powerful card draw. And then Trial of Knowledge if we hit the fourth land. Basically, if we hit the third, like we're going. We we are just going onward from there big time and we hit the third land so this is going to be great because now i don't even have to cycle the countervailing wins it looks like we're just going to drop prowler turn two and then more importantly champion of wits turn three got that cultivator i've really really disliked the cultivator but again i think we needed them in this deck so that we can pull out the one swamp with the, uh, the list we ended up going with. But honestly, it's been so slow that it honestly, just a green-blue deck with no black splash, um, just so we could cut the two cultivators would probably be a better deck now that I've had some more experience with the card. Solitary Camel is uh, pretty good here. They've already got a desert, so 3-2 lifelinker. Let's drop our champion. Make sure we hit that fourth mana so we hit all the mana. Okay, these are not mana. Uh, I'm just discarding both cultivators, you know what? Just gonna keep talking crap on that card and then I'm gonna discard them. Just get out of here, I don't want you. Get out of here, cultivators. Alright, well, this is gonna be some kind of nasty tricks that I'm not gonna play around. I'm only playing two drafts of this format this time around because Dominar Unite is right around the corner, so whatever tricks you've got, go for it. I am not going to recognize them or memorize them this time around. No tricks at all. Is Actually, pretty good for us. Uh, we did hit our land. It does come to play tapped, though. Countervailing Winds is for three. Actually, gonna hold up Countervailing Winds rather than playing the Seeker. A 1 3 is not blocking a 4 2 at all. And I will absolutely draw my card here. Make our Countervailing Winds bigger and get closer to the fifth land. All right, Greater Sandworm, that's fine. Festering Mummy, that's not annoying enough to counter. I'll actually cycle the 7 drop here. Unburden? Um, it's also not actually that annoying. 
Like, I could just discard Seeker and Greater Sandworm instead, or whatever the Sandworm draws if it's worse. I think Countervailing Winds is probably worth more than two cards. Um, with this current hand. Actually, even Ritualist I could maybe discard because I don't need it for Champion. Yeah, I think I'm playing Sphinx this turn. Or, or because I only need it for Champion. I do need the Ritualist to make it a Champion. Of course, I would draw my black card after I do that, but... Could still draw towards the Black Swords with Trial of Knowledge, maybe. That was the worst possible draw after discarding away this Ritualist. That's very sad. Alright, Beautiful Sting. Goodbye, Sphinx. We'll take four. Ecma Sentinels. Let's draw three. Discard one. Need the Black Swords super badly now for Vile Manifestation as well, so we discard a blue or a green source because we don't need them that bad. Although they get us to Champion of Wits, which is pretty huge. Um, yeah, maybe I just discard the card too. Should just give up on the black. Don't even think I need to cycle this Vile Manifestation because I know I'm just going to play Land Wits next turn. That would just be the biggest uh, creature on board, unless their last card in hand is pretty good. Torment of Hailfire for four, okay. Um, goodbye Trial of Knowledge. Goodbye Vile Manifestation. Goodbye Hecma Sentinels. And uh, I'll take three. Go to eight. Not the worst Torment I've experienced. Draw four, discard two. There's the swamp. Now that I discarded every black card in the deck. <laughs> oh, these draws are actually hilarious this game. Um, yeah, I mean, we get rid of the swamp then, I think. I need to double check, but yeah, that was every black card. Um, keep the desert, I guess. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Play the river winder next turn and just hold the desert in hand. Sure. All right. They didn't draw removal, so they can't get in. I mean, they could sack the dunes here. They attack with the vizier for four. Well, they do that. Very okay with that. Kill the mummy, and we're still going to have a 3-3 left behind that trades into the vizier. Super, super cool with that. Although I can even just play a 5-5 hexproof. They definitely can't kill. Just hold that up as the blocker. Should uh, pretty quickly here stabilize now. Yeah, this looks really good. Double block and kill the 5-5. Five five. It's probably fine. Offer some trades on board. Hold up wins. If we don't do it, we um, cycle the desert. Avenger being able to exert is pretty bad. It's not good for us at all. Um, I can still counter whatever they play, so I think I can go to one. And then just kill them in two attacks while they're tapped down. Yep, attack all, pass. They don't untap, attack all, they're dead. Now I feel really safe. I think it's safer to have an untapped hexproof creature than it is to be holding up an essence scatter. I don't know, actually, it's a good argument either way. But... So I was say, either of those plays means we're almost definitely surviving them casting a creature. Both of those dies to a non-creature spell that, uh, um, a non-creature spell that makes us lose life. But Stripe Riverwinder lets us survive a non-creature spell that would untap their creature. Because then they would untap Avenger and I'd have a blocker up for it. Otherwise, they play a non-creature spell to untap it. I can't counter that and I die. So I guess we played around Jeru's Resolve, the one white mana untap a creature thing. 
So probably, I don't know, maybe better to play Striper of Winder over Essence Scatter. Again, I'm not sure. Maybe there's some creature that does two damage to somebody when it enters the battlefield. Or one damage to somebody when it enters the battlefield. So there was probably some card that we're playing around with by holding up Scatter and some card that we're playing around with by holding up Riverwinder. I mean, I know there's Jero's Resolve we were playing around by holding up Riverwinder. Or by casting Riverwinder, so. I don't know. I don't know. Either way, we're going to be 6 and 2 after that pretty uh, pretty wacky game there. Which uh, is super, super nice for this deck, which means we're heading into the final boss, win or lose. We've got the maximum number of games out of this draft as we possibly could. So at least there's that for the uh, for the final Amonkhet remaster draft here before Dominar United. All right, here we go. Final boss time. Turn one Cultivator. You all know how much I love that card. The card has been growing on me throughout this draft. I, I, I love it more and more. It's not bad here. We have the cartouche in hand, so pulling out a, a black source is going to be pretty inherently valuable. If I discard this desert, I still have three, so I have four lands by sacking Cultivator. I may be discarding this desert then. Might be holding these in case I get interaction for my cycling cards, or cards that synergize with them. Miasmic Mummy. Um, well, I guess I'm discarding one of them then. I guess Deliverance is more likely to do something than Compelling Argument. Ah, oh, they discarded an Embalm card. Very nice. Very good synergy there for our opponents. Alright, we've got the mana up to crack the Cultivator and get our Black Source, but we actually don't have a creature to put the Cartouche on anyway. It's going to be a little awkward, but it's probably still the line. It's not like Cultivator is going to do much blocking. It's threatening to block this 2 2. We passed the turn. And I guess it's blocking the mummy all, all game. Yeah, Cartouche isn't actually doing something until we draw a creature. We did draw a creature now, so we'll play the Hecma Sentinels now. And then Cartouche does look spicy if we ever uh, sack the Cultivator. To get the cartouche. Wonder what the trick was here. We'll probably see it now if I block with cultivator again, and then we'll just have our cartouche be a dead a dead card in hand. Black white. It's just gonna put a minus one minus one counter on something. And stop a minus one minus one counter from being enough. No, I'm just gonna do that. And uh, we'll just see. Just make them use the trick. Again, I'm just not gonna know. Splendid Agony? Okay, that's not gonna work how they want it to. Since they only put one counter on the Sentinels. That will go really well for us. And that's just a huge upside of Sentinels, just how often you can just get people with that card. Nobody ever plays around you. Well, some people do, but I don't think people play around you having a cycling card in hand nearly enough. There's just so much cycling in the set. You should almost always play around your opponent having a cycling card for Sentinels if you can. So like there, it would have been pretty easy to just throw both counters on Sentinels just in case. Okay, they've got their 3-3 uh, three, three flyer. Let's make a lifelinking Hecma Sentinels, which is going to be super good. And we'll make their uh, flyer even worse. And I think I will cycle one of these lands here to get some extra damage. Don't know if I'm cycling both. Well, if we draw Deliverance, then sure. Ooh, a Vile Manifestation with the black mana for it. All right, if they've got removal for Hecma Sentinels, we're tapped out. But their removal would probably kill it regardless because they're in black-white. I don't expect them to have a minus three, minus three removal. They probably, at this point, would just have destroy a creature, exile a creature, or pacify. Excuse me, pacify a creature. All of which would kill sentinels, even for holding up the tricks. But we'll see. 
Maybe we didn't play around a thing we should have. Lethal Sting? Yeah, that would kill it regardless. They've got it. Now their Flyer's just a 1-1. One, one. So things look pretty okay here. Our opponent's got more cards in hand, but if they can't kill the Manifestation, we're going to have a much better board state because that card's going to be terrifying. It's a 4-4 four, four for 2 mana right now. And we've got Deliverance to make it a 5-4 whenever we want. If our opponent has a Godfather's Gift, I guess we have main deck Dissenter's Deliverances. Maybe I shouldn't have scooped game one so so fast when they played Godfather's Gift. Actually, looking back on it, I don't think I've ever like really paid attention to what Dissenter's Deliverance actually does. So maybe there was some game where my opponent had an artifact down and I should have just blown it up with Deliverance. Who knows? Definitely too late now. I'm like, wait a sec, I guess I can just cast the actual spell. Doesn't seem like it's gonna happen. But maybe. Countervailing Winds looks pretty excellent here. Yep, we're gonna do it. To save our Vile Manifestation and make it a 5-4 by putting another cycling card in the grave. Counter unless they pay 7 here. Flash in a rest in peace in response. Somehow. To exile our graveyard. They're thinking through something here. Maybe they have another removal spell to throw at the manifestation. That they're debating on. Maybe they're just roping us. Maybe that was all their plan was, and now that that plan's fallen apart, they are not a fan. Okay. Just for one in the sky. We kill them in three attacks. I don't think I need to cycle this right now. It's not going to speed up the clock at all. I'm just going to hold this in hand. Oh, they do have another removal spell. Okay, well, goodbye. Bio Manifestation. I can't draw one mana card that saves that. Although at this point, I probably am going to want to cycle this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, in case I draw a seven, a seven mana card, I should cycle this right now. No, <laughs> I shouldn't have cycled it because now there's a Drake Haven coming up. Well, we'll just play the Sphinx first because Drake Haven does not do anything anymore because I cycled Deliverance, but that was rough. Cycling would have been a better play if I like drew into Ominous Sphinx and then drew into like Greater Sandworm. If those were my next two draws, that way I could drop Greater Sandworm um, still, even after, after having cycled it. Uh, but that was super awkward. Turn all creature cards with power 2 or less from your graveyard to your hand. Does that just kill me? Uh, get some mummy back to their hand. That's it? Okay, that's not that bad. Oh, it's still not good. There's still a good 2 for 1 effect here. But I'll I'll just make sure to play around the mummy coming back with the, with the dawn. And get the binding mummy back too, if I ever kill that. If they just keep dawn in their graveyard. We're just passing turn for now. Uh oh. Well, I guess we're countering. <laughs> we're countering a, a miasmic mummy because I can't play this card for my hand. So that'll end up being better than just discarding it to the mummy. So if they do bring the uh, miasmic mummy back to hand, we're just going to counter it rather than discarding a card for nothing. Dune Beetle. That's fine. I think I would rather discard a Miasmic Mummy than a Dune Beetle. Again, I'm pretty unlikely to be able to hold this Essence Scatter forever. 
because I think they are going to pop their dawn at some point to draw a miasmic mummy. Alright, past turn. Uh, well, if I hold on to the island, I won't have to discard in essence scatter. Oh, actually, no, Miasmic Mummy's really good for me. I need to let Miasmic Mummy resolve, because if they if they do pick up a Miasmic Mummy and cast it against me, then I will be discarding a card for my Drake Haven, and I'll get another 2-2 flyer. Wayward Servant. That is... Scary enough to counter, but then they're just going to dawn it back to their hand anyway. I guess it resolves. This is going pretty poorly for me here. All the creatures they played work really well with Dawn. They're just drawing into all the Dawn creatures now. How many cyclers do we have left? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We have nine more cards that synergize with Drake Haven left in the deck. Hecma Sentinels is a nicely sized blocker. I like that. their creatures plus one plus one this turn so they can get another attack in do i draw the card off the prowler here i'm pretty greedy i'm gonna draw a card off prowler a trick to kill my sentinels here too wow you do that's very rude oh come on please let's get some goodies Shuffle our gods, I beg you today. There we go. There's one. Um, if we draw more, we can do them at instant speed, so probably just doing everything at instant speed here. I guess I couldn't do... If I draw my 2-2, two -two, that draws two cards and discards two cards, I can't do that at instant speed, but I'll just take three this turn. It'll be fine. It'll be fine, I, I promise. It'll be super okay. I'll just draw the uh, the cheap cyclers and not that one. Or just take three and go to 12. That's not terrible. Yeah, let's go. Well, well, 5-5 five, five Hexproof is kind of a thing here. Kind of a thing on this board state. Can't get tapped down. Yeah. Probably not right to cycle this. Are you gonna dawn yet? Please dawn. Oh my god, they're just gonna have 5,000 things in their graveyard when they cast dawn. I, don't, I still don't think I scatter that. Just a 2-4. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine mana is enough for Riverwinder plus Scatter. If I play my land for turn. Alright, and then if I get mummied, whatever, I'll discard a cultivator. But they can't they still can't afford to cast Dawn and the Mummy immediately, so. We're fine. I'm definitely holding up Scatter over Cultivator. Zero three is fine on this board, but I don't even think they're attacking in against the five five anyway. And they can't tap it down with the mummy. I might run out of cards here. I might just mill out. Yep, I've already used one of my compelling arguments, so I can't win the mill race. I need to find a way to kill them. Okay, I'll hold this in hand now for my draw two, discard two, if I ever get that. So we just play Cultivator. Three, four, five. Shoot. Can't really attack. They get to triple block. I can only kill one of their creatures because two of them are for toughness. And they can just bring all their creatures back from grave to hand anyway off of Dawn. That's probably good enough to counter. They can embalm it again, but... That's good enough to counter, yeah. We'll slow them down with it. 
I guess the embalmed version's a zombie, so they get to tap something down when they do that. Shimmer Scale Drake. Probably better to play a 3-4 flyer than it is to draw a card and make a 2-2 right now with 11 cards in the deck. Should I cultivate a land out of my deck? I don't know. I don't know, I don't like how small this deck is, and I don't like how I have to draw cards to make drakes. 11 cards here. There's the attendant, I've got the bigger flyer. Yeah, I mean... If I don't just draw ways to make drakes as quickly as possible here, I'm still just gonna die to them doing Dawn and replaying a bunch of stuff and tapping a bunch of stuff, so... I feel like I will die to them actually beating me up if I don't draw well, so let's make it more likely we draw well. Even though we might just mill ourselves out, this will also get us closer to a boatload of drakes. This is not a drake producer. Actually, Greater Sandworm is probably our best draw in the whole deck. We've got two of them still. I don't think we cycled any of them. Yeah, we still have two Greater Sandworms in here. We've got win cons that'll win the game quick enough. Just not currently, not right now. We're digging still. Digging into a nine card deck is scary. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that a lot. It's probably better than them not playing the mummy, but still it's, it's nice that we get to do that. Bold attack. I get to crack back for five now? His opponent thinks they're still in the aggro, which they kind of are, but we know that our deck is mostly gas at this point. Seeker of Insight, that's not that gas, but there's some, some major gas left in here. We've got two Sandworms, a Riverwinder, a Ritualist, Trial of Knowledge, Champion of Wits, Compelling Argument, and one land. That's what's left now. So we hit the only non-gas card left. Outside of a land. Everything else is gas. No, Ritualist is pretty bad too. Okay. Ritualist and land are a dead draws. Everything else is incredible. <sighs> okay. In that case, I might attack two things in here. But then they could probably... They can... They can dawn... Five mana and have three mana up, which means they tap one of our three blockers. And then they attack with everybody. They hit us for three in the sky. Um... Tap that down. I block two things. So I would block there and there, and I take one, two, three. I'd be at six. Well, I'd take six. I'd be at three. I actually can't really hit them that hard. Because of the binding mummy. Maybe I should have killed that one instead of the life gainer one. Oh, they'd be at a much lower life if I killed that instead. I don't know. Just pass here. Lord of the Accursed. Your whole board gets plus and plus one, and they can give them menace by tapping it. I was gonna say, it's been a long time. Assume they're probably finally casting Dawn. Okay, draw two, discard two, get two drakes, be it five cards in library. Hopefully we actually miss this time. We hit our land and our ritualist here. Those are our best draws because we discard wherever we draw. Oh, those are two very good cards we just discarded. That's fine. Probably couldn't afford to cast the... Um, the trial with how many cards are in my deck anyway five cards left that would be a uh, draw three yeah all right i need to find somehow find lethal super fast i'm just dying to lord of the accursed they just give their whole board menace two three four give four of their creatures menace one two three four five six seven eight yeah no 
just drew these cards in the wrong order. I needed the Drake Haven much sooner. It's too late at this point. We're going to mill out or we're going to die to the Lord because we just can't. We just don't have enough creatures to be attacking them. We have to keep playing really defensively. So we're probably dead to Binding Mummy now. Binding Mummy plus Lord of the Accursed. It's pretty ridiculous. I still, my two Sandworms are still in there, and they have like nothing in their deck that can block Sandworms except for uh, when they get Lord of the Accursed out. That's super sad. If we just got like one sandworm this game any time like three turns ago or sooner, I think we would have had a really big shot. But not a great uh not a great order of draws this game. What is this in their grave? They got a grind to dusk? They discarded. Exile any number of creatures with minus one, minus one counters? Okay. Um, I think I'm dead on board, but I guess we'll find out. Yep, that's exactly lethal. Cool. Did not quite make it there today, but still a very good run with this deck. And it will be a six and three for the final Amonkhet remastered draft again. Unfortunately, Dominar United is right around the corner. And thanks to Wizards, we will be playing in the early access event. But because of that, I only get to do two Almondcat remastered drafts for the daily drafts, which is super sad because I think this format's really cool. I would have loved to uh, play a little bit more of it, but they just put it so, so close to the release of Dominar United. We are going to have to do the uh, the Dominar United videos starting tomorrow, so little little sad to see uh, Amonkhet Remastered go so quickly, but still was a fun time, even if I drafted pretty much the same deck two times in a row, two cycling decks in a row, but as you can see, they can, they can play out pretty well, even if you're weirdly like green-blue cycling, but mainly the blue core of the cycling decks is what really makes them tick, what makes them quite powerful, the Hecma Sentinels, the Drake Havens, and the powerful cycling cards like Shimmer Scale Drake and Double River Winder, those kind of cards, so super sweet deck today. Um, honestly, the Cultivators were really, 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 really slow, and I think that the better version of this deck might have just been green-blue blue just played some other nonsense over the cultivators maybe we do play the stalwart and we do play the vizier or something like that um and then just up the land count a tiny bit back to just normal numbers um what is this how many lands did i have in now 17 yeah 17 land deck this is the blue green version um i think we do have enough cycling that i liked the lower land count in here it was stressful in some games, but overall it worked out pretty well to have that low of a uh, of a land count. So maybe uh, maybe we play like a cat or two. Although I don't love those either because they're so bad against minus and minus. Maybe we put a kudu back in and just play sixteen lands, something like that. I don't know. Overall, pretty great time. Drake Haven was ridiculous. We already knew that. Um, Ominous Sphinx was insane, and this is the best I've ever seen the Hecma Sentinels be. We got a lot of free kills off the, the Hecma Sentinels of our opponents, just not expecting a cycle at inopportune times. So really good stuff from everything in the deck, kind of just operating at peak effic efficiency. And uh, yeah, we're going to get a nice six win run out of it. Not bad at all. But again, that is going to end the Amonkhet Remastered Drafts. 
If you enjoyed this video and would like to see more like it, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to let the YouTube algorithm know to send some more of these videos to you in your recommended foods. And uh, we've got plenty of great draft content on the horizon here. we got Dominar United right around the corner. That is going to be the big focus of the channel for probably like the next month here. So we're going to be playing a lot of that format if you're interested in that. Um, and yeah, we uh, we play pretty much every draft format that comes out. So that's about it. As always, thank you very much for watching. And I will see you again soon for some more Magic Arena.